Howdy, it's Uncle Paul. Well, I had a great time this past Sunday in Mason, Texas. Well, you may remember that last week, last Sunday, I uh, had to hit the road because I was going to go preach in Mason, Texas. Uh, a friend of mine was out of town. So uh, what that congregation does there on the last Sunday of the month, they have a potluck lunch. So uh, they have morning worship, then they have lunch, and then they, instead of going home and then coming back in the evening for a, uh, the nightly service, the evening service, uh, they just have a short devotional after lunch. And so, so we did that, and then after that, I went to do some sightseeing, uh, saw the, uh, the Fort, Fort Mason right there, real close to the church building. So I'm first going to show you my five minute little Devo talk uh, last Sunday, and I do talk a little bit about backpacking. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is I like to go backpacking, I like to go hiking. And you know, there are people that like to go on long backpacking trips, you know, for hundreds of miles, a thousand or more miles. And they like it, you know, that takes uh, months at a time. And so that's very taxing on a person. It's taxing on a person physically and mentally and emotionally and even spiritually. And so uh, there are people out there when, when they see someone taking this journey, they feel compelled and it's in their heart to help them, to help them with water or food, to help them, you know, give them a ride to town to resupply. Some of these people will put them up in their home so that they can wash their clothes, take a bath, uh, or they mend them back to health sometimes because they get sick and they put them back down the trail. And many times these people are perfect strangers most of the time. They don't know who these, these hikers are. And there's a term in the hiking community, if you will, when it comes to people who provide such kindness and generosity, and that is they are trail angels and that all that kindness any kindness shown to a to a hiker a long distance hiker especially is called trail magic so learning all this it got me to thinking <clears throat> you know what is it that the bible tells us as christians that we're to be doing and do we do it do we actually do it you know, in the book of Acts, chapter 20 and verse 35, the Apostle Paul there, uh, he says, Remember the words of Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And in the structure of the Greek there, uh, it has the meaning is blessed is the one who continually practices giving, continually practices. And then Paul goes on in Galatians chapter 6, verses uh, 9 and 10, he tells Christians there, uh, to not grow weary of doing good. And he also says do good to all, not just Christians, not just to friends and family, but even to perfect strangers. And he says as you have opportunity, meaning we are to seek opportunity, we're to look for opportunities. You know, so as Christians, we need to make sure that we challenge ourselves, that we do what's necessary to grow the right heart, the right mindset, the right attitude, that we're going to regularly practice giving uh, and that we're not going to tire of it. We're going to look for opportunities, be prepared for opportunities like the Good Samaritan was. Some ways we can do that or, or be encouraged to do that is be mindful of, one, the impact that that makes on the recipient. You know, Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. When we shine that light of good works and of kindness and hospitality, uh, that reflection of God uh, upon uh, the recipients leads them to seek God. It even can lead them to honor and praise and glorify God. I've heard people on these long journeys uh, tell stories about this trail magic and from trail angels and it, it brings them to tears sometimes and they talk about how it has um, uh, how they now have more faith in, in humanity if you will because there are good people out there another thing is obviously 
the example of Jesus Christ who came to this earth not to be served, but to serve. Matthew 20 and verse 28. And the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8 tells us there that, that Jesus humbled himself, humbled himself to the point of death, death on the cross. We have to have that same humility. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So friends, that's what we need to do, brethren. We need to humble ourselves. We need to have that same humility. We don't all have the same abilities. We don't all have the same money. We don't all have the same talents. We don't all have the same energy or health. We can't do the same things to help people, but we all can do something. So that is what God wants of us. God expects that of us. That is what we're to grow, to desire to do as we become stronger, more faithful Christians. So let us challenge ourselves, brethren, so that uh, we will let our sh light shine in those ways of kindness and goodness and hospitality and sharing, that our light will shine so that all of us may glorify God. Fort Mason was established in 1851, and it was one of many frontier posts out in West Texas. They were the frontline defense against uh, attacks against settlers by Apaches and Comanches and the Kiowa Indians. And on the property were uh, stables, a blacksmith shop, a hospital, and some 25 houses. The United States military abandoned the fort in 1869, but of course during the Civil War it was occupied by the Confederate forces. And after 1869, the state of Texas used it just for a few years. Now many of the officers who served uh, at this post, they went on to become generals during the Civil War, both for the North and the South. And of course, the most prominent and well-known of those was Robert E. Lee, and Fort Mason was his last post before leading the Confederate Army during the Civil War. Good Sunday morning. Whew. I'm a little tired this morning. Anyway, well, what you just saw was my supper last night. I had a couple of uh, turkey cheeseburgers with the low-carb mug bread that I like to make occasionally. That hit the spot. That was really good. Well, this past week, it's been a busy week, and everybody around here was busy. So my nieces have, have had a birthday this past week, and um, they're fraternal twins, and you've seen them on this channel uh, several times, and they're just really great girls. They're hard workers, and they're not girls anymore, so happy birthday to Morgan and Maddie. I really am a, a sucker for these old military forts. Yeah, I like, I like history anyway. So there are a bunch of forts out in West Texas and in different parts of Texas. And I've only been to a couple of them now. But one of these days, I would love to just take, a, to take about three days or whatever it takes and just go out and, and see and hit just a bunch of them. Uh, that I think that'd make a nice little road trip. Okay, without any further ado, let's go get on the scale. Okay, so last week I weighed 388.8 pounds. This morning it's 385, so that is a loss of 3.8 pounds for the week. So that's wonderful. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next week.